I'm standing here just waiting for it to get sunset so I can start roosting birds. I thought I heard a distant gobble, but wasn't sure. But I got several spots marked on the map to stop and uh, hoot and coyote howl from here in just a few minutes. I'm gonna give a few more minutes, get, give the birds a chance to get into the trees. But finally back out here turkey hunting. It's been a couple weeks. And uh, the reason I haven't been hunting, because where I was gonna go, which was Nebraska, I thought about going out there, forecast was just not desirable high winds cold temperatures are still snowing parts out there on the ground and i just wasn't looking forward to doing that hunting in that kind of condition especially after dealing with six months of you know cold and snow at home and uh, i had a co-worker that wanted to take some vacation time so i said you know what i'll stay home i'll go to work i'll let you have some vacation time because i'm getting ready to go you know go at it full bore during turkey season so i'll hopefully things will warm up by the time you know your vacation ends things have got down here this evening temperatures in the upper 60s low 70s grass is starting to green up i see some tr trees starting to bud out and i rode around to get familiar with this area and i've already seen three groups of birds each group has had at least one long beard in it and uh one group wasn't near public but one group was real close to it within like 100 yards and another group was on public and uh, I just tried to, kind of drove by them and got a little bit of footage of them. And, and that was about it. One of them I did stop because they were off in the woods a little bit and kind of got some footage of them out there in the woods scratching. But all of them got hens with them. All the longbeards have hens with them. So we're going to be dealing with that. I think what I'll do is go ahead and coyote how here and then just start making my rounds. And that'll give me time to make my rounds back through. I have like a little zigzag pattern just work in this area. And I can call to multiple places just coyote how and now who. Let's head on down the road and see if we can get one to gobble somewhere else. I'm pretty bummed right now. I just realized I left my vest at home because I was doing some changes to it. I left it in the basement at my house. It's got all my action cameras, my 360 camera. I think I have a backup action camera here in my truck, but I'm gonna be limited with my footage apparently. We'll see how it goes. One right on that ridge there. That bird that gobbled a little bit goes back off that way. And that bird I saw in public day was back off that way. Maybe the same group, but we're gonna owl hoot here and then we'll coyote howl and see if we can get maybe two birds to gobble. <laughs> and the owl just laid in a tree right here. Straight ahead. Let's look at the map. So he's roosted right on the edge of I mean the, the public private lines right here. Straight across. So I know that line. I need to go down here and go that way and get a line on this way. I just got that other bird pinpointed. I know exactly where he's at. But I came back around here to this bird I got to gobble first. That's on that ridge. And he is like right right in here. Just listen to this gobble. I got him to gobble again now. It's quiet out here. He's got a really deep thundering gobble.
That's a gobble of a bird that usually is an older bird. And that's just you no know, proof of that. Just from my experience, whenever I've had one that's gobbled, has that real deep old sounding gobble, what I classify as an old sounding gobble, they're usually a heavy bird, long sharp spurs, big thick beard. They've just been around for a while and they've matured and they put on some weight. I might have to target him, but he's probably got a pack of hens with him. All right, now it's time to look at the maps. I got two birds roosted, pinpoint, uh, kind of pinpoint exactly on the map where I think they're at and uh, strategize for which one's probably gonna give me the best odds tomorrow morning. And the fact that I left all my gear at home, my extra camera stuff, I gotta dig around the truck, see if I got some backups with me. Otherwise it's gonna not be the same video experiences I've created in the past. But anyway, we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Beautiful morning. For now, there's some rain headed this way. I'm hoping it holds off long enough for me to get this hunting this morning. I was uh, getting my gear together at the truck and the owl fired up and that bird I'm targeting gobbled. It's still dark out here, but he still gobbled. Anyway, I'm gonna slip in here and get fairly close to where I think he's roosted and get set up and just wait for it to start getting light.
back off to my left still. One of these are Jake's or Jenny's, not with the main group. Turkey's yoke now behind. Look like a Jake. and he's with the adult hens. They're probably down there milling around or something and as the sun pops up, they'll work their way up here. Virgil's cobbled behind me in the field. Well, he's right there behind me.
chasing gun ring right there. He's like, I don't dare move the camera, but he's like 25 yards. He's not super spooked, but he, he's never he caught me moving. I was trying to find a hole to put the gun through. Oh, my neck is killing me. He's just walking. He ain't running anything, just walking, pecking a couple times. He's very cautious, though. in a way. And he was at 25 yards for the longest.
And I thought I had a hole there, and I moved my gun, and then I realized there was still too many twigs in the way, and I think he caught that little last little bit of movement. Had there not been any twigs in the way, he would have been a perfect shot. He had his head up looking. And he just kind of walked away, pecked a few times, and then turned. He's just standing up there now, on top of the hill. My neck is, there's a crick in my neck. I set up this morning with this brush behind me to give me some back cover, because I was set up on this roosted gobbler. And I've been doing a lot of calling right, right here at the end, right before I shut the cameras off. Because I had a hen putting in the tree here, a gobbler down the hill. Could hear some hens walking down here below me. Sound like a Jake yelping, Kiki yelping back across the way. Other birds gobbling. I just wanted to keep the, you know, the, the chaos going, you know, all the calling. And uh, things were settling down just a little bit. I shut the cameras off just to kind of listen and conserve battery and footage. And I just kind of see what was going to happen. And all of a sudden a bird fires off on my right shoulder here, right up in the field. He heard all the commotion. He come down here. I don't know where he came from, but he, where he was roosted. And he came down here to check us out. But he was, he stayed behind that thickest part of this cover the, the entire time. I had a hole here I could shoot through. And I saw that and I went ahead and propped my gun here hoping that he would just, he only needed to take like three more steps and he would have been in it at one point. But he'd get close and then he'd turn around and kind of go back up. And then I finally called a little louder and I was trying to call when he strutted and turned away from me so he couldn't kind of peg exactly where the calling was coming from. And that seemed to work. And he never really noticed me down here until I was sitting here and I thought I had an opening there. And so I, when he turned his back or he looked away or whatever he did, I pulled the gun back and got it on him. And it was just too many stems in a way. And I took my eyes off him and I was kind of looking at something or repositioning. And I don't know if he caught movement or he just noticed a change in the shape of the object down here. Cause now I was from this and I was like that, who knows? But he wasn't too frightened. He just broke strut. He walked out another 20 yards, pecked around a few times, and then walked up. He did come into my, my gap right here as he was walking away, but he, I just didn't like the situation, him that far away. He was like at 35, 40 yards at that point and had a limb or two in the way, a little twig. Right here, he was like 20, maybe 25 tops. And, uh, and I would have had a clear shot ahead had he just come on down. but. Plenty of uh, other targets around here, I believe, because I've heard plenty of birds gobbling this morning. So I've got several more days. I imagine I can get another opportunity at least. May not kill one, but birds are around for sure. Birds are starting to talk again. Hen or Jake? Yo, sounds more Jakey than hen. But, uh, Started yelping at bird gobble back off this way. Oh, that's that one up in the field gobble now. I should probably try to crawl up to a better spot. Gobbling back up in there. The slide right over here somewhere.
sounds like he's way over there now.
talk about close quarters. Probably a two year old. I'm trying to look at this though. I thought I'd hit him right here low, but that's an old wound right there. I wonder if somebody else hit him there during the youth season. I had the bead right on his neck. I couldn't imagine that I would have hit that low, especially that close. He might not have any good meat. I mean, that's all messed up. Look at this. I mean, he's ripped open right here. All scabbed up. I wonder what got him. Well, I love hunting birds in the timber, uh, but I'm not opposed to hunting them out of a field, which I really wasn't. I was kind of hunting the timber, and I was stuck here because of the way I was set up this morning because those birds were, that gobbler I'd roosted last night was roosted so close to this field, and I bumped a hen out of the tree right here on the edge of the field and coming in this morning, so I was like, ah, oh, I better just sit down on the edge, and hopefully they'd come up here. Well, they didn't. They stayed down in the woods, and I guess all the calling this morning drew a bird from another direction. He came in behind me, and you guys saw how that all worked out. But as I'm just sitting here listening, there's no sense of being in any hurry with all the birds I heard gobbling around me this morning. I just sat here, and I called some, and just sitting here, and all of a sudden a bird gobbled back behind me, and I'm like, is that the same one from earlier? Could be. He could have been one part of these two, and another one joined him. You know, he was up here, and one came in. But anyway, I was like, well, let me get repositioned. So I crawled around here and got on this side so I'd have a lane to shoot through. And as soon as I started calling, they, they were coming. They came in a hurry. And then they stopped out here. It couldn't have been 15 yards. I don't even think it was 15 yards. It might have been 10 or 12. But it was pretty, pretty dang close. When I first walked up to him, I thought I hit him low. But I was like, how did I hit him low? But then I realized this is an old wound. I just saw the bare skin here and stuff. And then I got close to it and it's all, man, it's, it looks like it's, I don't know. I don't know how old it is, but it ain't from this morning. <laughs> I wonder if it's from a youth hunt or did a, some type of critter get him. But, you know, it looks like he might be a, what, what a typical two year old or something. Could be older, but you know, Maybe one inch spurs, just under seven, eight, something like that. And your nine, eight, you know, nine inch beard, maybe. Feels pretty heavy. But he's mine now, and I get to take him home. It's just a shame that I filled my tag the first morning because we're going to have a week of beautiful weather. And uh, I wonder if I can find somebody else to hunt with because I'd hate to leave this beautiful weather. Uh, opportunity to hunt some more and go home to Minnesota and, and not hunt for another week. Oh well, but I can't complain about the season so far. Three hunts and uh, three gobblers. I think I've hunted a total of, what time is it now? It's eight o'clock, so two hours this morning. I think I've hunted a total of five hours this season from three gobblers. I ain't complaining. Let's hope it continues that way. I guess I should head to the truck now and figure out my next step, whether I'm going home or find somebody else around here to hunt with.